ready? Okay, everybody say hi to everybody on Facebook. Yeah. Yep. Hallelujah. I don't know what time it is. What time is it? Oh, it's Patty and Angela will be popping on here soon. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we have had some amazing things happening in our country for a while now. And I just want to encourage you that if we can do one thing, just one thing, we can prevent a lot of disaster in our nation. Now I'm going to I'm going to close my Bible because I've got it in 14 font. I don't need this out and yes, I have a mask when necessary so that the people are not paranoid. If you go into the book of Leviticus chapter 14, I don't know if any of you saw that on my Facebook page last night. They were told to wear masks and and be at a distance when they were around leprosy, a disease that they could not find a cure for. But they said to cover the upper lip, not the nose. People are covering their nose, therefore you're breathing the CO2 that's making you sick. And this is one of the reasons we have a spike in COVID. But the Bible tells us that they were to cover their upper lip when they were going around the people with leprosy. Hello? Hello. It's in the book of Leviticus, around chapter 14. And then it said that they went out and said, I'm clean, I'm clean. In other words, you were supposed to say, I have it, please stay away from me, I need to distance myself. Hello. So, you know, this COVID thing is nothing new to God. This whole thing that we're going through in this country is nothing good to God. Anybody remember Absalom? No. When he tried to take the throne? When he created his entire army? And he lied about the army to let everybody think that he was going to be the king? And it turned out to be Solomon. Well, all through the scriptures, we have people <coughs> fighting for position and yeah. jockeying for position and people trying to take other people's thrones and other people's <coughs> places. I got news for you. You can only do one thing, and that is you have to put on the armor of God. You don't put on the prophecies of other people. Come on. Right. You're not putting on the, the messages of other people. You can walk through them, but you don't wear them. Hello. Yeah. We live by what the word tells us. Amen? Amen. And so what we need to do is we need to put the armor back on fresh and solid. Amen. And I'm telling you, if your armor isn't fitting properly, you need to get fit for your armor. Because the armor that you have was cut for you from the moment you were born. So sometimes we have some people that have trouble with their armor. But I want to tell you, a prophecy was a short word. I released it at the keyboard in 2018, and we're in it now. Tonight, I saw an army of armor standing at attention, and I heard that the heavens were getting ready for war. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, keep your sword close to your side. And then I saw a picture of kings who were standing in the front of a map. I saw them developing strategies on how to win battles and how they are to take, and how the battles when they take place. And then I saw a roller coaster and I heard the Lord say, get ready America, you're ready to go up and down. Wow. Has this not happened since 2018? Oh, yeah. But the key here was, I saw an army of armor standing in heaven. This is the second time that I have seen this. I'm going to take you on a little journey with me into the heavenlies. Okay. When I was in the presence of God one day, the Lord came. I can't say the Lord. It would be the presence because it wasn't the Lord. The Lord assigned me a presence to take me into the heavenlies. And I went for almost two, a little over two years, was it? Almost three years, almost every single day. But finally... What happened was that there was something that took place in this one encounter I had in heaven. Don't call me up and ask me how long was I there in order to validate it. Huh. Hello. Yeah. Because there's no time frame. Yeah. And so I didn't look at my watch to say, it's 1119, I'll be gone for two hours in heaven, and then I'll come back and write a book about it. Now don't do that to me. I am going to tell you what happened. I ascended into the heavenly realms and I was standing on what looked like uh, a surface that was just 
a surface. Like I was standing in this room, I was standing on a surface, okay? I looked over and I saw a huge tree. It was a massive tree. It was like a mighty oak. I can't tell you that it was a mighty oak, but it was like a mighty oak. How many of you have ever been to um, the east, west coast where you could drive through the redwood trees? You could drive through. I've driven through that tree, and that was really powerful. And what happened was I looked over, and I saw this tree in heaven, and I saw a light. And it was an archway of a door. And in that, it reminded me of the Keebler commercial. Remember the Keeblers? Yeah. You know, and that it reminded me of the Keebler commercial, and there was a light, and I went and looked, and it looked like it was this massive tree, but this little tiny archway, and I thought I, thought I was like in Keebler land. I mean, I didn't know where I was at the time. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, you don't know everything. When you have heavenly encounters, you don't know everything, and people who think and say they do, they're wrong. They don't know everything. If they did, they wouldn't be here anymore. Right. Hallelujah. Right. So anyway, I look at this, what looked like this little tiny Keebler door, and somehow the presence is moving me closer to the door. And when I'm closer to the door, I find out this is not a little tiny Keebler door. This is a massive archway that is, it was too high for any human being to ever touch. And even in the land of the giants, they couldn't touch it. So you couldn't touch it. And it was massive, and it, it illuminated a golden red light. And I stepped into the doorway, and as I stepped into the doorway, I realized I was in what's known as what I call, you may call it something else, but I called it the forger's palace in heaven. Because the Bible says in my father's house are many mansions. Mm -hmm. So this was a palace, because to me, mansions and palaces run hand in hand. And I'm getting my castle in heaven. Because Robert has yet to build me one here on the earth. Oh. He's working on it. We have a castle bathroom now. But anyway, as I was in this archway, I looked and I saw this huge vat that was massive. It was a massive vat made out of iron and gold. It was just like a golden iron vat. Let's put it that way. I can't tell you what it was made of. I didn't go and take an analysis of it. So what I did is I watched, and I saw these little stout angels. They were, actually, they were smaller than me. Can you believe it? And they were stout, and they were massive, and they had black leather um, belts on, black leather, leather wristlets on, black leather boots, and a black leather shield around their groin. And I'm telling you, these guys were massive. They were burly. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger at his best couldn't compare to this. I mean, The Rock cannot compare to what these guys look like. And so I'm watching them, and immediately I was pushed forward again. And as I was pushed forward again, one of these angels came up to me and said, lift up your left hand. And I lifted up my left hand, and immediately he took the imprint of my hand and went to where this vat of fire and mineral or whatever it was that was liquid in the fire and the bellows there were angels that were on the bellows and they were doing this with the bellows and the fire was getting hotter and hotter and hotter out of the fire comes a blade and a handle that matched my hand and he put it in my hand and then the presence was next to me and he said look to your right and what do you see and i looked to the right and i saw a breastplate and i was thinking wow joan of arc you know, and it was breastplate, and when I looked at the breastplate, it was completely encrusted with jewels. And the presence moved me over, and the breastplate was immediately upon me. The rest of the armor was being formed. And the word was, I made this for you before you were born, and now you have to cut yourself to fit into it. And I'm still trying to do that. Hello. I'm still trying to do that. Just because we're older doesn't mean we can't do some things. Come on. You didn't stop at 65. At 65, you're still alive. And then the presence pushed me back away. And as I was pushed back away, the Lord or the presence spoke to me and said, open your eyes, look beyond, and tell me what you see. And I looked beyond and beyond and beyond and further than the eye could see, the eye could see I saw armor standing at attention. 
who is massive armor from all different nations, was standing at attention. And it was ready to go. And the president said, what do you see? I said, I see armor. He said, what else do you see? I said, I see armor. He said, what do you see beyond the armor? I said, I see armor. And he said, this is the armor that has been waiting for 2,000 years to come upon the church. Hello. And then he said, you're about to get a message. And I said, praise the Lord. And the next thing you know, I was back in the tea room, had no idea how long it was gone. I didn't, I didn't time it to make sure that it was, it was sound enough for the public to hear. I didn't, I didn't write a book about it or a movie just to make sure that people would believe me. I knew what had happened. Well, that very night, my son called me. And out of the blue, I said, Creighton, you're not going to believe what happened. And I told him what had happened. He goes, Mom. And this is what he said. He goes, shut up and listen to me. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to listen to you. He said, no, you need to listen to me. He said, you had the sword of the spirit and the breastplate. He said, where was the rest of your armor? I said, I'm sure it was being made. He goes, no, no, no. You don't get it, do you? I said, no, I don't. Now, let me tell you, this is a guy who's not living in my area. He's in another state. He's having a life that isn't too tutti fruity. He's probably drinking a beer. And God starts speaking through him. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and have a beer. Because wine is a mocker and beer is a brawler. So don't be doing that. Don't be saying I said that. I'm just giving you the facts. And he says to me, he goes, Mom, the sword of the Spirit is righteousness. And I said, yes. He goes, the sword of the Spirit is the word. I said, yes, it is. He goes, you live by the word. He says, everything you do has to be by the word. You have the sword. He said, you have the breastplate of righteousness because you believe in righteousness. He said, these are the two strikes that I've built your church. He said, the problem is people aren't putting on the full armor to build the whole church. And so we have some churches that are going to have the gospel of peace and some only the helmet of salvation. And we can name those denominations. But the problem is we are not putting on the full armor of God. We say, oh, I get up every morning and I apply the full armor of God. And I go out and do my thing. And I stumbled and I fell along the way. I got in an accident and I'm so thankful I had the armor of God on. I'm so thankful that I did this and I'm so thankful that I did that. Because I put on the full armor of God. Well, hallelujah you put it on it could have been a whole lot worse but there's something missing about the full armor of God that we are not tapping into and I want to read some things amen how many of you ready yeah. to hear the word now yeah. hallelujah yeah. anybody get anything out of that so far yeah. Good. well it really happened what the prophecy was in 2018 <laughs> get ready for a roller coaster ride America it has happened we hear this, we hear that, we have hope, we don't have hope, we're excited, we're not excited, we got COVID, we don't have COVID, we got a president, we don't have a president, we've got unity, we don't have unity, the church is open, the church is closed, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm broken, I'm rich, I'm this, I'm that, come on, yeah. we're being, hello, we're being pulled in every direction by the devil, yeah. by the devil, yeah. and it's a spirit of Leviathan. And the spirit of the Leviathan cannot be cast out by the church. The Bible says no one can cast him out except God. The only way Leviathan can go, ladies and gentlemen, is when Leviathan repents. Because it's the king of pride. Yeah. Read it out of the book yeah. of Job. People are making ministries out of the spirit of Leviathan and they're getting more and more proud while they're... I mean, I've heard people, I've had people come up to me and say, you know, I have had this prophecy that I'm the only one that's going to have this, and I'm the only one that's going to have that pride. Yeah. Pride. 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 When a minister comes up and says to you, God has given this to you and to no one else, you need to step back and realize that that minister is speaking in pride because God does nothing without the testimony of two or three. Mm, that's right. That's right. We've got to get this thing right, and we've got to start repenting, and we've got to get back to the gospel of Jesus Christ and preach Jesus Christ. Amen. Preach it. Yeah. I'm trying, sister. I'm 
trying. Out of the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. And yes, I speak out of the King James language because I like it. I like it. I like it. Finally, this is what the word says. Finally, my brethren, be strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, meaning the anointing. That doesn't mean I get to go around and slam everybody with the anointing. It means wait for the anointing to come. Finally, wait for the anointing to fall. Wait for the presence to come so we can destroy what the enemy is trying to do. Amen. Yep. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Oh, you have to do this now. Oh, Fauci's going to get up there and say, oh, this is going to last six months. Now it's going to last two years. Oh, I was wrong. Oh, no, I was right. Oh, wear a mask. Oh, don't wear a mask. Oh, this is herd immunity. Oh, it's not herd immunity. Ladies and gentlemen, we're listening to a schizophrenic. No. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and it's the wiles of the devil because there's a title attached to an almost 80-year-old man who hasn't seen a patient in over 20 years. And yet he's got the voice of the world listening to him because God only knows how many people are being paid off for the new world order to take place. Yep. Yep. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking the truth. Yep. Yep. A lot of people don't like what I'm about to say, but it's the truth. On Facebook, if you don't like it, unfriend me. I won't be offended. I have a list of about 800 that want to be my friend. Finally, be strong in the anointing of the power of the presence. We aren't in the presence. We're in our thought pattern. We're in our emotions. We're in our wants. We're in our desires. We're in our knowledge. But knowledge is only power when the anointing hits the knowledge. Yeah. That's why the Bible tells us we need the word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Hello. Glory to God. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts and wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the devil or the evil in the evil day and having done all to stand because it says finally be strong. We can't be strong without the presence. And we can't tap into the presence with our mind. We can't, we only tap into the atmosphere because we are conduits of the same atmosphere. The, the glory of God to hide a thing is the glory of kings to search out the matter. And we're not searching out the formula of God. We have people making formulas of everything, but where's the formula to kill COVID? Yeah. I just read the other day that Listerine kills COVID. Maybe we need to wash out our mouth. Yeah. Maybe we need to quit being so afraid. Yeah. I am very concerned about all of a sudden we have an influx of death upon death upon death. Are they being treated? Let's hope they are. What is this that now all of a sudden we have a mass genocide coming from the devil? Yeah. What is this that all of a sudden it's, a, it's worse now than it was 10 months ago? What have we done? How do we break it? Do we stay hidden and cloistered in our houses? I just shared with you, the Bible said the mask goes to the upper lip, not over the nose. Yeah, but... Now, if you're in the store and they want you to cover the nose, you've got to obey that. Because they're the boss, you're not. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, there is things that God has done to help us. He's shown us. 
But there's wickedness in high places. And that's just not spirits. It's in high places. It's in rulers and in principalities. And these are leadership around the world. When we're more concerned about an iceberg breaking than we are about a COVID, we've got a problem, ladies and gentlemen. If we're more concerned about locking people up instead of stopping them from burning down cities, we have a problem, ladies and gentlemen. If we are more concerned about making sure that our children don't go to school so that we can indoctrinate them later, we have a problem, ladies and gentlemen. During the Spanish flu, during the yellow fever, we have had viruses hit our nation before and annihilate whole cities, but it didn't stop people from living. Now, we've been dumbed down so much, even by some people that are close to us, we've been dumbed down that now we're afraid to even live. Ladies and gentlemen, the armor of God is for everyone. Start putting it around your house. Put it, do a Jericho march if you have to. I remember when Robert and Karen and I did a Jericho march around this city with our car and with two horns, the long silver horn that Phyllis gave Robert and the shofar. And he went, we went to all four corners. Actually, we went to... We went to the four corners and then south and then north. So we did six times, six places, and we blew the shofar and the horn, and we declared the city for God. We declared the city for God. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we did it because God told us to, not because we wanted a power play. Right. Hello. We didn't go about and broadcast it to everybody. We just did it. Take up that whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. The evil days are among us. This isn't that evil day. That evil day is the day of the rapture. That evil day is when the separation of the sheep and goats, those that are alive and remain, will be caught up with him in the air. That's the evil day. And the evil day is also that day when you are chosen, are you going to say and choose this day who you're going to serve? Evil days are among us. What is your choice? Are you going to choose to listen to the scientists who somehow have some of it right? Or are you going to read the word yourself and get it straight from God? Or are we going to run from prophet to prophet? And I am prophetic. I love being prophetic. But you can't just listen to one prophet. you got to go from piece to piece because they only carry part of it. And then you got to pick up the Bible and read it and see if it matches. We hit, why? Because the Bible says, Study to show yourself approved a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing this word of truth. We need truth to set the nation free. We're about, I'm telling I'm going to tell you a prophetic word that God gave me. He said, you're going to start seeing in 2021, instead of everything being global, 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 it's going to become regional, regional, regional. Because we can't forget our country and go save the world. Right. You can't go out and save the world if your neighbor is hungry. Right. You can't go out and do this and do that when your household goes without. I know ministers who gave all their food to their neighbors while their children sat hungry because they thought they were obeying God. You have to be healthy enough to take care of those that are not. Where's your armor today? How does your armor fit compared to the first time you heard about the armor? How does it fit today? I tell you what, it needs to fit pretty darn good, and you got to be supple in it, because if you got to mount up and ride, you got to be able to do that. If you got to run, you got to be able to run with that armor on. You, it 
It's not spiritual, ladies and gentlemen. It's factual. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue spoken against you shall be condemned. That is the word of the Lord to the church. Yeah. And the church, there was a movement that the church was supposed to open their doors today and pastors were supposed to come out of hiding and come into their churches. And last night on Facebook, I saw Facebook church, Facebook church, Facebook church at such and such time. I'm like, please open your doors. I've only got a couple, few people in here, but at least we're open. Because we're telling the world that we believe that our Savior came to save and seek that which was lost, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise them from the dead, and set the captives free. And we can't do that hiding behind a screen. Right. Yep. We have to talk to people. Amen. People beget people. Yeah. In verse 14, it says, Stand, therefore, having girded yourself, your waist, with truth. What is truth today? Is it just your truth? Is it someone else's truth? Is it my truth? How about if we believe the word is truth? Yes, and if the word is true, the word can set people free. lay hands on everybody. The word can do the work. The word will move over there in the back by Sister Phyllis. It will move back there by that little baby. The word will move. I, every time we sing Waymaker in here, he starts laughing. He loves that song. And it's also the song that it brings this place into such a unity, whoa, that the angels come in and there's two standing back there, three standing back there right now. Because they hearken unto the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It didn't mean that you go out pretending that you're at peace. It means when you carry the gospel on your feet, you will bring peace into a situation. Yeah. This is not for you, ladies and gentlemen. The armor is to be seen by the enemy. When man goes to war and he puts on his uniform, he is identified by rank and file of the uniform that he wears. Hello? If Angelo was here today, he'd be in the back going, Amen! When soldiers go to war, they put on their uniform that was cut for them to wear in battle. We've got to get our perspective back, ladies and gentlemen. We must get our perspective back. Mm -hmm. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Whoa, the shield of faith. Don't touch me, I have faith. Don't touch me, I got the sword over here and the shield over there, I'm ready for battle. Mm -hmm. Don't touch me, don't touch my faith. You're liable to see me rise up and my temper will come out. Don't touch my faith. I'll rebuke you, devil. Mm -hmm. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God is on me to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Sister Karen and Roberta were with me when we were in Wisconsin. And people, we, I, people were dragging on me. I mean, they were yanking on my arms and everything else. It's very rare that you'll ever see me wear a scarf around my neck. But you see how it's tucked in? And so nobody, when I, if I pray for them, no one can grab me and yank me down. And they were holding me back by the belt loops of my trousers because people were yanking on me. And I finally said, quit touching me. I'm supposed to pray for you. Don't. Let the anointing do the work. Let the anointing do the work. Because it will. Take that shield of faith upon which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. I'm telling you, the darts are coming every day. You're sick. No, you're not sick. Stay home. Get outside. Don't get out. Wear the mask. Don't wear the mask. Darts, 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 darts. You turn on the TV, hate Trump, love Trump, hate Trump, love Trump. I tell you, Trump is the most powerful man in the world because they can't stop talking about him. And you only talk about that which you love the most. Oh, yeah. And they love to hate him. Because
because he's strong enough to take it. Can you see Biden up there with that kind of attack? No question about it. Come on. Hillary couldn't even have handled what Trump has handled. It wouldn't have mattered who was in the presidency. This battle that we were are in, it was coming. And it's coming because we're not united. Now, I don't want to offend any of you in here that speak foreign languages. I think it's great. I speak a thousand of them when I speak in tongues. I don't have a problem with that. But I'm going to tell you, when people come to this country, they need to adapt to the nation, not the nation adapt to them. That's right. Come on. When you go to any other country, I have to adapt to the rules and regulations of that country. I don't go in and change that country and say, I'm, I'm a victim, I came to your country. If you're a victim coming to my country, don't come to my country. Because we're the greatest nation in the world. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, all these people that are victimizing and victimizing and victimizing, when trouble comes, the first place they call is the White House. Can you send me your troops? Can you do me this? Can you give me that? I want my food from America. I want my grain from America. I want my textiles from America. I want my cars from America. I want the electronics from America. And America sends everything over to China to remake and send back into America, but it originally comes from America. Well, how dare we have coal in America? What do you mean, how dare we have coal in America? Without coal, millions of people are going to die. Because many of those rural areas are still run by coal. What do you think carbons are? Oh, well, we're going to do away with oil. Oh, you're going to do away with oil. You're going to do away with gasoline. You're going to do away with all that. Without that oil, you can't even get the windmills to move. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get this thing right in our head. And we got to get it right in our heart. And the longest walk anyone ever makes is the 18 inches from the brain to the heart. Because when they go after your heart, they can't hurt you. They cannot hurt you because it's in there. Think of Nora Lamb. Think of Corey Ten Boom. Think of... Um, the Countess Angelica, if you look her up on Facebook, she and her family escaped. And the story of how they escaped and escaped and escaped, it's amazing. There are so many people that have gone through so much and people are suppressing their voice because they're saying, hey, I lived through that. Let's not do that again. And they're suppressing their voice because these new people know nothing. It's like having a whole bunch of new people come into the church and giving them all the high positions and you don't even know them. You don't even know them. You don't give people high positions you don't know. That's right. You don't do it. They got to earn that way to the top. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Above all, take that shield of faith, which you are able to quench all, everybody say the word all, all, all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Not one or two, but all. We're being bombarded around the world. I hate to say it, but even the Pope is speaking against America. He's speaking against Trump. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's the presidency of the United States. It doesn't matter who owns it, who yep. sits in the seat. Right. That's the presidency of the United States. You're touching the one that's going to come and, and, and bite the head off the one who's going to try to hurt you. You don't bite the hand that feeds you just because you have an issue with the personality of that person. The reason a lot of these legislatures don't like Trump is because he knew them before he ran for office. He knew how they made their money, and he labored with them. That's why they've gone after him, so that they don't get caught. It's the strategy of every part of the devil, is to make you feel guilty for what he's doing. That's what Satan does. He turns the tables. 
but I know one who turned a bigger table. He walked in, he didn't walk into the government and turn the table. He didn't walk through the neighborhoods and turn the table. He walked into the church and turned the table. And his name is Jesus, the Son of God. And he walked in and he turned the tables and things began to shift. God turned the tables in the church. Hallelujah. Then it says, take the helmet of salvation. Mind what you think. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so he will be out of his mind. Don't provoke people to wrath. Don't provoke people to anger. And don't sit around docile either. Ask God for wisdom. You know, I'm going to tell you a little story. When I lived on my farm, I went through a season where Jesus visited me. I tell you, my seasons are in two and three years at a stretch. I don't know why, but they are. And for two years, almost to the day, Jesus came and would sit on the end of my or on the side of my bed, and he would say to me, "Ask me anything you want, and I will give it to you." I was so terrified of him that the only thing I asked for was wisdom. It's the only thing I asked for. I didn't ask for riches. I didn't ask for souls. I didn't ask to be an evangelist. I didn't ask to be a prophet. I just asked for wisdom. And one of the things that I'm so thankful for is that I have wisdom on how to read the word. I do. I have wisdom on how to read the word. And I'm so thankful for that because he gave me that. I, I am so thankful for that. And I'm, thank, I'm surprised. When I see some of the broadcasts I did a couple years ago, I am surprised at what came out of my mouth. I go, wow, I just learned something from him. Yeah, you know, that's God, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Last night, I went to bed early, and Jesus came and sat on the side of my bed. He said, I've come to you again, and I ask you to ask me, what is it that you want of me? I said, Jesus, I want the wisdom of the word. I just want the wisdom of the word. Because it's the word that sets people free. It's the word that heals the sick. It's the word that raises the dead. And it's the word that gives the wealth to the church. It's the word. Yeah. All I want is the word. I sometimes, I will read one scripture a day. And I, I am consumed by one scripture. And I can't even move beyond the one scripture because there's such a wealth of information in that. Just think of the people in other nations who take the Bible in pages and they rip it up and each person, what if they just got the begot, the begot, the begot, the begot? Do you realize in the begots they got? They got generations of getting. They got generations of wealth. They got generations of seed. But no, they don't look at that. They go, oh, I just got the begots. No, you be God. Get it? There's a wealth of information in the scriptures that no other, no other God can touch. That every other God yields to that. Because they always yield to the king of the highest. That's why he's called the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. Mm -hmm. We take the helmet of salvation because we need to change our thinking thinking. And we take the sword of the Spirit and we pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with perseverance and supplication for all the saints. How many churches are really praying for the church? Instead of P-R-E-Y, they're P-R-A-Y. We need to P-R-A-Y for the church to have the anointing to destroy this yoke. I am concerned because I have family members with compromised health. I've had compromised health. My husband's had compromised. I can, I can put a label on each one of you, and I won't, but I can say there is a weakness in all of us that COVID could attach itself to. But if we put on the armor of God, we can withstand the temptations of the enemy. Now, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verses 15 through 17, and in the New King James, it says this. 
so truth fails or falls. Sorry about that. So truth falls, and he who departs from evil makes himself prey. Truth falls, and people depart and make themselves prey to what? To lies. When truth falls, he departs from evil. Then the Lord saw it, and, and it displeased him, for there was no justice. Church, we need justice. We need to get up and stand in the righteousness of justice. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own brought salvation for him and his own righteousness, it sustained him. Where are the prayer meetings? She should not be on that call by herself when all of you can tap into that call. She should not be sitting here in this church by herself to pray. There are two prayer meetings on Tuesday, and each one of us should hit one of them. The only reason you don't see me on that is because, one, I'll either take it over, or two, I will know something and I can't use word of knowledge. I've done it to protect you. Where are you? This prayer, God said there was no one interceding that he had to find his own. In other words, his angels had to come minister unto him. He had to encourage himself in himself. Is that not what David did? David had to encourage himself in the Lord, but God, Jesus, had to encourage himself in himself. Therefore, he brought his, his, therefore his own arm brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He had to lay hands on himself. For he put on righteousness as a bless, breastplate, a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments for vengeance for clothing. And then he did the key. He clad himself with a cloak of zeal. Because there was no intercession for him. There was, there's no intercession for the leaders to stand their charge. There's no intercession for us to get up and get moving. There's no intercession. Instead, instead, if you look on Facebook pages where you have for your communities, you have more people afraid of this COVID virus, and then we're get, fear has torment, ladies and gentlemen, and what you fear you will be consumed with. We, I'm not saying we should lie to people. I believe the virus is real. But I believe God has a plan to kill it. I do too. And I don't believe it's God's will that we have it. Amen. But I believe it's Satan's will that the world is consumed with it so that we can force a new world order out of the United States. Yeah. And I believe the politicians picked up on this warfare that is the China virus. And on Facebook, if you don't like it, unfriend me. I don't mind. Because I love you enough to tell you the truth. We know the origin. We know where it came from. We know that this is mutating. Where is your armor today? Where's the armor today? Wear a mask. That's your armor. But yet everybody's got their hands on everything in the store. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Wear your mask to the grocery store while everybody's picking which vegetable they want. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to get wise. And we have to kill this virus. I read Listerine killed it. So I garbled. Why not? I know that the nano silver that we have will kill it. Because my lab tested it and it killed it. It doesn't mean you're not going to get sick, but it does mean you might get better a whole lot faster. Everybody's got some weakness in their body. Even Goliath 
had a weakness. And it was because he shot off his mouth so much. And because he shot off his mouth, it took someone who had a small mouth, but a big faith level that said, you may come with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. Rise up, shepherds, and follow. Because we three kings of Orient are. For we shall go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is alive. Amen. He's alive. Yeah. And he's telling us, put that armor on and get that cloak of zeal. And if no one will help you with your armor, put it on yourself. And if it feels a little tight, you might need to work out just a little bit more until it feels good. And get that armor on and live with it on. And do what Jesus did. Put the cloak of zeal over the top and encourage yourself in the word. Amen. In the word. Yeah. Let the word do the work and you be its mouthpiece. Yeah. God bless you and happy new year.